I'll tell you a frightening conversation, which I had with at then was the director of the behavioral science unit that houses the profilers of the FBI. We're going back a number of years. And uh, I mean, I remember his name, I'm just not going to say it again, a, a terrific guy. Um, and he's, Classified information. Yeah. Um, I don't like, you know, outing people, particularly, you know, once they retire, they I love it. try to, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, he said, what's frightening now is that the people coming up, uh, you know, into the bureau and in different branches, they've lost the ability for just basic observation and basic skills to detect deception because their whole world is this, mm -hmm. is anyone listening and not watching, it's, you know, thumbs and texting and that's their communication. So just basic, uh, just observation and uh, basic interactions and communication is something that all has to be taught. And certainly it's intuitive to some. Some people can be taught into the blue in the face and they're just bad. Other people, they just have that, you know, the hush, they, they have that uh, sensitivity to it. I think I'd like to expand the lens beyond that to sibling relationships and parent and child relationships. Where, where are you seeing this compromise to the skills that we are lacking because we're not interacting in person as much? And where can we grow in that regard? It's good because I think it's just emotionally, it's devastating for some people because you think you're connecting, you're isolated. The relationships you have, the interactions you have are surface. You know, texting somebody is not a relationship. We think it is. Having a friend on Facebook is not a relationship. We think it is. So we're experiencing these surface um, uh, relationships and, and communication, but there's no depth. And because of that, we don't feel really connected. You don't feel connected. You feel isolated. So from an emotional and mental health standpoint, it's very injurious, very injurious. And now certainly a relationship is only as solid or healthy as the people in it. So if you have one or both people who are less emotionally solvent, then the relationship isn't going to be ideal. And also communication is going to break down. It would try sarcasm in a text. So it doesn't matter how many emojis you use, that conversation may very well break down. And the ability to be able to- I've been advocating for a sarcastic font, by the way, for a long time now. Oh, that's very- Maybe italics? Be a, Use italics? But it's unclear. It's ambiguous. Sarcastic we need to font. all agree to a sarcastic font. Research shows after five interactions back and forth, conversations by text typically break down, meaning five, five, five back and forth, meaning that if you're trying to get your point across, it ends being, it, it devolves into something much less productive. Pick up the phone. Yeah, exactly. Call right. them. Right. Right. I hate phone calls. You are pro you're are part you, of the problem. I, <laughs> I, no, I, I, I'm not part of the problem. I have the problem. <laughs> you're, you're, a bit, you're a big introvert, are you? Yeah. Yeah. I can't call people. I know. How do you not know that? You probably, you probably text to see if it's a good time to call. Right, you don't just call or you don't just text, yeah? Will you just pick up the phone and call if you need to? No, I can't do say? cold calls. Yeah. I can't do cold so calls. So wait, do you just I'm read that on me? I'm enjoying this so much right now. You read that? Like, I, by the way, first of all, no one, like people who meet me, like they, don't, they can't believe I'm an introvert because of what I do. Right. But like, there's nothing more um, scary than a room full of people. So yeah, I get that. I, I, I love people though. <laughs> <laughs> You're not anti. Not to say like no, I love dogs a lot more. You know, like, I'm not. I'm maybe antisocial a little bit. I don't know. What do you think? I. What do I think? I'm also uh, an introvert. Oh yeah. So I get it. Yeah. So how does that work for you? Because you have to speak in front of throughout right. a year, probably tens of thousands of people. Right. So it, it, it's not my uh, vocation. I stumbled into it. There's absolutely there are pl plenty of speakers, and and you know you, we we know them but they live for that energy. I don't, um, yeah, I, I like- It's exhausting, huh? It, yeah, it, 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 there are times when, you know, you're, you're, you're in the groove and you're affecting a positive change and there's an energy that is, is indescribably um, exciting for sure. But those are few and far between. I mean, my nature by itself is, is an, as a writer. That's why I've written and I really stumbled into the whole speaking thing. Um, but by nature, it's, I, it doesn't, get me going and I'm, I'm not uh, enthused by a crowd or speaking or having the spotlight. Well, how do you give yourself the, I guess, the permission to do that internally, you know, to, to move away from the, the pen and, and the laptop and get in front of people? I imagine it's something that's, you know, again, you mentioned it's outside your comfort zone. Yeah, sure. Well, that's growth. I mean, you know, that, that's, you know, that, that's what we're here and for. That's something that that's, I guess that's what led to your decision to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, again, I really stumbled into it. Someone asked me to speak and I spoke and it went, you know, pretty good. And I started speaking and, and I, at one point I taught public speaking. So, you know, I, I only taught it because I've done everything wrong that you can as a public speaker. So I learned what not to do. What was like the biggest no, no you didn't, you've done in public speaking in your, in your career. I continue to do it. And that is, I, I tell people slow it 
down. Mm -hmm. And when I start, I'm thinking faster. And I, more than a few people have asked me after a speech, you know, how I work on my stutter. And I don't stutter in <laughs> real life because I mumble and jumble and my words and I speak so quickly. It sounds like I have a stutter sometimes, but I don't. So that's, you know, one of the things just public speaking 101 is slow it down. And uh, I, I can't even take my own advice. I have to remind myself to do that.